Hello again, everyone. So, I have three pieces of news since last time. Um, so the first one doesn't have too much impact on the Let's Play, but I figured I'd share it anyways. I finally got my forum account registered, so um, very big thanks to the uh, forum admin, since I suppose it's quite a lot of work to process all those different requests and keep that going for as many years as you do. So yeah, um, that won't be an issue going forward. Um, next up, I finally got a part-time on this puzzle. Um, I didn't do it entirely on my own. I went and looked at a solution for the like original puzzle online. I went and looked at a few key moves and tried to basically finagle my way into doing those key moves. And then I basically redid the puzzle a whole bunch of times in a sort of web demake of the thing. And then once I got good enough at that, I finally was able to uh, do it in the real deal in Enigma. Um, one thing that was pretty annoying is that... Music's off, by the way. Um, if you'll notice, these, these uh, little singlets here, the single pluses, um, it's actually quite a bit of effort to move them when they're in certain configurations because uh, not every piece has the right sort of connection um, to allow you to like reach over to them from a certain side to push them. So there are some pretty annoying moves I had to do. Um, let's turn the music back on. Uh, another thing, um, I was thinking about a potential extra little guideline for myself for the Let's Play as I've been doing it. Um, specifically, I'm thinking I should be able to give myself the option to skip a level if it takes me more than one episode to solve it. And by solve it, I mean understand it. Um, because I don't want too many situations like patterns going forward where I spend like four to five episodes on a single level. Um, because a lot of those episodes were spent learning new things about the puzzle, but also, apologies, had to wrangle my dogs for a moment. But as I was saying, um, if it takes too long for me to figure out a level, I'll go ahead and skip it just so that the pacing of the um, overall Let's Play doesn't suffer too much, and so that you'll be able to enjoy a lot of the other levels we have to offer. Now, one last thing. Uh, you might have noticed it at the start of this episode, but somehow, not only did I complete Map It Out, but I also got the world record time by nearly two minutes. So, um, that was unexpected. And again, all it was was just a big maze. I took a screenshot of opening the level in a notepad, and then I just went and drew the pathways connecting all the different oxid stones. And that was all I had to do. Just following that for a good couple minutes. And I guess nobody ever really bothered to do that particularly fast. Let me catch my breath for a second. So yeah. Um, I guess I've got a world record now. I will say, uh, this world record is very much improvable. So this is a call to any interested person in the audience. Um... If you would like to snipe this world record out of my hands by the end of the month when score submissions for Enigma are uh, done, uh, feel free to try that. Anyways, let's finally move on to Checkerboard. Alright, a Jacob Scott level. So we have... okay, I see what's going on here. So a sort of island bridging level with the classic fare. Sure. Sorry, just edited out some noise there. So, let's see. I guess I'll just sort of bumble around for a second, 
try to figure out how best to, uh, so we've got to be able to bridge basically everything on the map to be one cohesive connected thing. So sure, we can try to do something like that, hopefully. Uh, we do have, these blocks on the sides here are interesting. They can only bridge to the sides. So noted for later, I guess. Lose a ball. Okay, it's actually not a um, restart on death puzzle. That's quite interesting, but I guess there's nothing here that's too demanding of that, so... Let's just try stuff and see what sticks. So, we can get a connection going here. Let's go ahead and... I'm gonna do this, 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 and this. And hopefully, just like that, so we've revealed that, we do need to work a little bit harder for the next ones. So let's try this. Um, I might already be in a loose state, but we'll see how far we can take this. So, to bridge over to the left, what do we need to do to accomplish this? I do note that there is a specific way of sort of chaining these block pushes together. Like, if I went and pushed this down, and then pushed the next one left, that would yield a different result than left and down. So I do need to do a bit of forward thinking about how these sort of cascading actions will work out. Can I get to the top left? I'm not entirely sure. I actually think I see something. So let's bring both marbles around. I was thinking about moves that would require both marbles, and I think I've got one. So let's push this up, then you push this left, and now we've got leverage there. So that's pretty nice. Um, what next? Would bridging to the left edge help me? In some ways, yes. In some ways, no. Back to thinking. Alright, I think I might see something. Uh, we've not been using this uh, bottom region of the screen too much. But I think if I do something like this then we should be able to get some more blocks to use. And I'm thinking probably something like this would be pretty helpful. So let's try If I were to bridge in this thing to the right of me here, would that be helpful? Maybe. Let me think more about it.
All right, I had to do some stuff, so timers incremented a bit while I was out, but let's see, where was I? So we got one last thing to bridge. I'm wondering if I have the pieces for it or if I will need to restart. So we could push this one down, and then this one left, and then that one left and down. And then down, okay, I think I see the path. So let's go ahead and, actually we don't even need to do any shenanigans just yet. So we do this, we push this, I guess this one can go down. Actually, hold on, I do need to be careful about this, I think. Right, we do need a bit of extra leverage to um, get the final push. So we're three checkerboard blocks away, but... Actually, okay. I think I might see a way to do it. So we do this, and then we do this, and then we can actually just, uh, do this. And there we go. So that's the last one bridge too. I actually notice, uh, this room is asymmetrical. So the, uh, blocks on the right were actually in an easier layout than the ones on the left here. And uh, we ended up not using quite a lot of blocks, but regardless, the level's finished. Okay, that's an entrance. Ever hungry. So this is just a race against the clock. Sure, let's get a part-time. Personal record. What's the part time? Five seconds? All right, let's go for some, I think I know what I want to do. That is very loud. Like it's sort of normalizing the audio, but even then it's sort of impressive how loud it is. Okay, you know what? I can get part-time on that off-stream, off-recording. It shouldn't be that bad. All right, Dead End by Daniel Heck. All right, we've got our little item. What does he say? Look closely. Oh, and actually, here's something interesting. I'm pretty sure this is an instance of the fact that the two different marbles, the black and the white one, they actually have different inventories. So in order to switch back to black, we're gonna need to pick up another yin yang orb and then we should be able to freely switch. So we've got that. Sure, sure. Press F3 to try again. All right. So red here. Let's see. Red, blue. Are those always the same? If I can hit it. Red. 
blue. Uh, third trial. Red and blue. Okay, so this might be a puzzle where the oxids are actually the same every time. So let's see. Um, either marble could use the uh, yin yang. Um, let's see. The only way we're ever going to get into the top left is with the white marble. So I do believe we have to do this. But not like that. Okay, so let's do this. I'll pick up that. I'll hit this one. Now we've got a match. And now we're sort of at a loss again. Um, are there hidden things on the girders here? Since these are pretty suspicious. All right, let's search for hidden stuff now. I pick something else up, a magic rod. Okay, <clears throat> so we've got a little wand now. So now we can reverse these. That'll be helpful. Do we even need the other one now? I'm not entirely convinced we do. <laughs> okay, so that was a little silly troll level then. Colored doors. All right. So we've got an interesting little arrangement here. Okay. Sure. So I think the implication here is that the different colors of cells, the switches in them will open the same set of doors. That's how I'm choosing to read it. All right, got a lucky match there. So now we do this. Get a match there. Got a blue switch here. So we need to free green first. Um, blue switch opens those. Green switch opens those. So I guess we could try... No, okay. So let's move you back over here. How about red switch? Red switches? Oh, oh actually, you can see the uh, colors of the doors. There's floor tiles underneath them, so you know exactly which switch they're uh, meant to go with. So we can do this. Let's open this. Um, let's go. How do we hit that left one? Uh, let's keep this open. So you can go back in here. No, we do need someone to camp over here then is it possible? Hmm. Okay, so we need to get the, uh, the white one over here. And then we do this. You can go over here. And now with this open, now we can get that. Level finished. All right, that was neat. Family business. Okay, we've got another sort of uh, rubber band centric level. Looks like a lot. I'll just mic off for a moment. Yeah, this looks like something all right. So how do we get the little one to 
go anywhere. Got a little bounce off of that. Is there a red one up here? No, there's a yellow. There's the red one. So how do we hit that and then make that one go down without hitting the yellow? Seems like a pretty tall order. Um, but maybe should be fine like this. Okay, so we do have to be careful not to hit the oxid in the super low corner, but... So you come around here. I hit the wrong thing on accident. Who knows, maybe it'll be easier like this. Okay. So we got another match. What are these corner ones? Oh, if there's a blue? All right, let's match it with the blue on here. Oh, that was a purple. I'm pretty bad at this. Um, so there's a white over there. All right, so now I think we need to do some really funky business to get the little tiny one to hit stuff. So there's a yellow match, that's nice. Yeah, definitely. Okay, let's try to get our white match. Where was it? It was that one. Okay, getting close. All right. And now we're one away. So now you just have to hit that thing. Level finished. Okay, part times, I'm curious how those will look. Seven friends. Oh, okay. Okay. So... The little spinning top and the rotor there are interesting. So we need to... Settle those... In a way that... Let's us... Just drag that into place, and then that. That's gone and dislodged itself, so that's unfortunate. If I... are you... do you move towards me? Yeah, you move away from me. Okay. That's interesting to know. Okay. So I think I have a plan. So I think we need these on opposite sword opposite sides of the map. So you can go over there. pretty hard to get this all working. And there's that as well. This rotor is surprisingly strong in terms of this little tethering force. Alright, let's try to keep it Oh, it's scared of every marble. That's what's going on here. And then this one is too. So let's go ahead and get you lodged over there. And then you can go over there. And now we should be fine to stretch these all out. We'll take some fine control.
Nice. Blocks and water. Okay, sure. I'm just gonna do what seems obvious. Okay, so I think I messed up. So we need four blocks, and there is a way. Okay, so let's push all of these in. One goes here. No, now I only have two. Okay, so I messed up. So we push this in, do that. Uh, this is a restart on death level, good to know. Okay. So we got this. If I do this, okay, no, not quite okay. Alright, so I do need to do that a little bit more efficiently. So once a block is on the top or bottom edges, it's mostly unrescuable. Unless we do our bridge on the top or bottom rows, that's something I hadn't considered before. I think I got something here. No, I'm still down by one block. Never mind.
Actually, okay, I think this should be it. So we do this. We only need two more. We sacrifice both those like that. And we should have everything we need now. All right. So we've solved one puzzle out of who knows how many. I have a feeling this might involve a lot of these sorts of puzzles. And of course, there's also the ever-living threat of death. Okay, so we got one puzzle over here, and then we got, okay, one over here. Well, guess I'll figure out this one. I see. So we can't really be doing anything like this to solve this part then. Um, knowledge for next time. So now let's try over here. So we got... In theory, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, probably 7 probably at least seven things to bridge. And we've got a sort of rotationally symmetric layout here. Okay, so something I'm noticing about this layout, uh, these little middle blocks here, don't think they're ever relevant. Um, the sets of threes here, there's never really a way to get them to the other side, which implies that these are meant for making it somehow easier to get blocks across on the other side of this little pond here. So thinking about that more,
Okay, I think I see what I could have done differently here. Um, this little bridge under me right now should have been one to the right. And I think um, since these blocks can't ever interact with blocks on the other side, we just need to bridge the same way from both different directions. So let's try again. I definitely lost the plot at some point while doing that, so I guess I'll try again on the other side. Wait a minute, I just realized I can corner bump those. So we can actually use one less block while doing our thing here. Just looks as simple as uh, that. I think this might be what I have to do for both sides of this. And I'm just going to uh, do it once here to sort of show it off, verify to you that it's actually a strategy. I think I've done this in a few puzzles before. Bump. All right. Well, I've got a plan for this room. Now for the other one. All right. You might have noticed that the timer reset. Um, that was because I switched to my left hand because my right hand was getting tired after that last puzzle and then I immediately dunked myself into the water. So uh, just to explain that little discrepancy for you. I'm thinking in terms of a general outline here. So on the left side, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 blocks. And one crossing of this little river here takes five. So we could only um, do at most two full bridges from left to right. And then we need six on the right river to cross that. I'm thinking 
what I might want to do is build one bridge to the middle and then use some blocks in the middle to sort of create a larger sort of docking area to be able to store and move blocks a little bit uh, better and maybe only need to do one um, bridge on the left side for better benefits in the middle. So that's my plan. I just realized I don't think I need these metal blocks. I think I'm wasting more blocks trying to get access to these than I could if I just used all the ones over here to bridge across here. Because I put one here, and then I put another one here, and then I put another one on top of that. And those, that's three blocks, which could have gone over here. Okay. So I think I might have an idea of how to solve the whole puzzle now. So let's see if we can't put it all together. So let's reset. Do the same little opening. There was no reason for me to do it from that direction, but that's what I did. Okay. So we bridged across here. Now we build our little bridge, which looks a little something like this. We just gotta put that there. No better place for it. So this goes across. This goes to the left. We can't actually use this for anything, but that might be fine. So let's try this. So we gotta do that. Slightly wasteful, but I don't think there's any better way to do it. So that's three. We put this one into the drink. Gotta be careful not to lose the whole puzzle. 
All right. That's that. One more. You can go in. Okay. Red and blue, so blue's up top. Let's remember that. Blue on top. And now for this one, so we remember how to do this one. We bridge like this. And then we do some little corner bumping shenanigans. And then we just do that on both sides. So let's go down here. We can expend two blocks here. And we want them to be there. Okay. So move that out of the way temporarily. You can go there. Move you over to this column. That's that. One more. Hey, lucky match. So now we just do the same over here. Alright, so if I don't mess up the uh, execution at the very end, we should be in the perfect position here. So, clip that. Go over here. Be careful not to die. And then go over here. Don't corner bump that thing. Cool, better than par as well. Alright, that was a fun little thing. So we solved one, two, three, seven whole things that day, and that's nice. So this is definitely more reminiscent of Enigma 1, I'd say, just in general. Um, the aesthetical variety is pretty nice. We had one, two bridging puzzles, a meditation. Yeah, this was neat. So see you next time.